Hello, I'm Mo Harper, a student of social psychology at the Evergreen State College. And today I'll be teaching you about ethics, morals, and values and how they lay the foundation as a guide for our social interactions. Within the ethics, morals, and values of each and every individual lies the foundation of their interaction with the social world. By breaking down what ethics, morals, and values are, one can see how each fit into how people develop schemas, make attributions, set norms, feel confirmation biases, and act with altruism. Examples will be shown through three films and two books. The films include Daniel Lee's Three Kingdoms, Resurrection of the Dragon, Richard Lagravenese's Freedom Riders, and Brian Donnelly's Saved. The books include John Ronson's So You've Been Publicly Shamed and Bruce Bueno de Mesquita and Alastair Smith's The Dictator's Handbook. Each one of these media sources holds implicit examples of how ethics, morals, and values fit into each source's main subject, demonstrating the impact of how each individual's ethics, morals, and values affect the social world. So, what are ethics, morals, and values? According to Ada Vane's lecture during week three, ethics are the set of rules that govern the behavior or character of a person. If ethics are rules, they are made by others who put them there and enforce them. One's ethics develop not from themselves alone, but from the people within the environment and culture one resides in. This leads to morals, overarching principles of right and wrong. Morals develop either for or against the ethics of one's culture. A person will act on these morals based on their understanding of their culture's ethics. Morals and ethics fundamentally develop each other, where ethics are designed by a collective set of morals that create a set of rules, and morals come from one's adherence to these ethics. Then there are values, the beliefs for which a person has an enduring preference. A person can have a set of ethics by which their culture understands, but it doesn't always mean that each of these ethics are valued the same by everyone. As people develop a sense of morality within their ethical society, each individual with their own life experiences and happenings develop a set of attitudes and mental structures of what values most to them. These values are then expressed, for better or worse, and creates waves through cultures and societies that can develop new types of ethics and morals in people, and thus creating the cycle. For simplicity's sake, from here on out, ethics will be symbolized by the letter E, morals by M, and values by V. So, schema, ethics, morals, and values come together to develop an individual's schema. According to Thomas Heinzen and Wind Goodfriend's social psychology textbook on page 100, a schema is a cognitive memory structure for organizing the world. In the film Three Kingdoms, Resurrection of the Dragon, directed by Daniel Lee, one scene in particular, the commander of one of the three empires, Cao Cao, speaks to his granddaughter, Cao Ying, as they watch a battle wage in front of them. He tells her how these battles are simply just like games of chess, thereby distilling the schema in her mind that war is just like a chess game. Cao Ying listens to and respects what her grandfather tells her because she looks up to him, and through this, she develops the ethical understanding that engaging in war can be looked at like a game. Her moral judgment is then shaped to see war as the right way to go about things, and thus values war and combat. When the only truth is war, and the thrill of victory is the drive, a schema like this one can develop. So, Attribution. Again, according to Thomas Heinzen and Wynne Goodfriend, attribution is how individuals explain the causes of others' actions and behaviors. When one develops a set, certain set of ethics, morals, and values, they're not just making a list of things they find positive, they make a list of what's negative as well. For the sake of preserving cognitive load, a person may observe an individual with no other detail than maybe their appearance, their demeanor, or their words, and attribute a positive or negative reason to this individual depending on how it reflects their own ethics, morals, and values. In Richard Lagravenese's Freedom Writers, after developing into a school with integration for at-risk students, Woodrow Wilson High School turns into a conglomerate of people with different schemas 
resulting in fights and quarrels between students of rival gangs. And these gangs themselves are formed with their own ethics, morals, and values that make up the schema of each gang member. The actions and results of these gang fights within the school turn the faculty into a group of downers who doubt the capabilities of the students and the future of the school, thereby attributing a negative outlook to any and all individuals who fit the bill. A new teacher named Aaron Gruel, with a knowledge of history of past civil rights movements, works against the negative attributions of the students and the other faculty to reform the way they see each other and to make their lives better together. She formed an environment that's enriching, providing opportunities for the students to express themselves individually. In this, they start to find the things that they all tend to have in common with each other and why their differences make them unique rather than bad, attributing a sense of familiarity and closeness with each other and forming a friendship. So, norms. What's the norm? According to Thomas Heinzen and Wynne Goodfriend, again in their social psychology textbook, there are two types of norms, descriptive norms and injunctive norms. Descriptive norms refer to what is commonly done, that is, what most people do, and injunctive norms refer to what is socially sanctioned, that is, what social society says people are supposed to do. So as people develop their ethics, morals, and values, they develop a set of beliefs. As societies and communities develop with people that share these beliefs, these become norms. In the movie Saved by Brian Donnelly, a community of people with strong Christian beliefs start to see their norms challenged as events within the town's Christian private school and within the community transpire. The main character, Mary Cummings, finds out that her boyfriend, Dean Withers, is gay when she thought he was straight. With the Christian ethics and morals placed in her by what her family and community has told her and vowing what should be the norm, she concludes that Dean should be saved and not fall into sin. She suggests that if he and her have sex, then he must not be gay. Then, after discovering she was pregnant with Dean's baby, Mary protects herself from others finding out because she knows it's against the norm to be pregnant and unmarried. Inevitably enough, though, she is ridiculed and nearly attacked by her used-to-be friend, Hilary Fay, all in the name of what Hilary and the rest of the Christian school believes in. By the end of the film, anti-Christian graffiti found on school property is blamed on Mary, but later found to be done by Hilary Fay. This discovery by the entire school crumbles the illusion that these people created for themselves that their norm is a good one to live by. In the end of the film, Mary makes a fine quote, why would God make us so different if he wanted us to be the same? And now we're on to confirmation bias. According to Thomas Heinzen and Win Goodfriend, again, confirmation bias is searching for evidence that confirms what we already believe and ignoring evidence that contradicts our beliefs. So the beliefs made by one's ethics, morals, and values will appear in many different scenarios within a person's life. And the stronger the belief one holds, the more biased they will be towards it. An example of confirmation bias leading to action, for better or worse, can be found in Ron Johnson's So You've Been Publicly Shamed. In one of Johnson's cases, a woman named Justine Sacco makes a Twitter post saying, quote, going to Africa, hope I don't get AIDS, just kidding, I'm white, end quote. This statement was intended by Sacco to be satirical and funny, but within the eyes of many, Confirmation bias would lead others to believe that this is in fact a racist statement, nothing funny to it. Sacco was then bombarded by death threats and hateful comments for what she posted. This in turn received lots of media attention, which then resulted in more people coming to a confirmation bias that this indeed is a thing that we should be saying and inflicting upon her. So more people joined in on the bashing. It's mindful to consider how others may perceive you, so you won't be subjected to combat a retaliative bias. So now we're on to altruism. According to Thomas Heinzen and Wynne Goodfriend's social psychology textbook again, altruism is defined as helping others purely out of selfless concern for their well-being. With ethics, morals, and values forming people's beliefs, it can be understood how one can take their ethics, morals, and values and apply it to the way they help others. Acts of altruism are a person's time to reveal what they want others to perceive as their ethics, morals, and values. To be allowed and to allow one to help creates vulnerability, for better or worse. In The Dictator's Handbook by Bruce Bueno de Mesquita and Alastair Smith, 
It's explained how different types of government juggle between three deciding factors of people, dubbed the three political dimensions. These dimensions are the nominal selectorate, the real selectorate, and the winning coalition. And respectively, each one represents the groups of people that politicians weigh back and forth to influence their power, the interchangeables, the influentials, and the essentials. Different governments and people in power will put more emphasis in one political dimension than the other by weighing out different levels of resources and rewards to keep the people in their favor, showing altruism. Despite the differences in positions of power weighing out different variables with resources, they are all achieving the same goal, to gain political power and stay in political power. When a person in power has their own set of ethics, morals, and values with efforts to keep their power, they will show acts of altruism towards those who will keep them in that power, to stay on their good side, so to speak. A person in power can keep their intentions hidden within the guise of altruistic acts by benefiting others who can benefit them. If the ethics, morals, and values of those people being helped are benefited from the leader's altruistic act, then those people enact their own altruism to benefit the person in power. So, here we are. It all comes together with ethics, morals, and values showing how schemas, attributions, norms, confirmation biases, and acts of altruism are formed, it can be seen how each of these subjects can inherently affect the other. If you haven't noticed, any of the media sources provided could use one or any combination of these subjects. For example, a person with a certain schema could attribute a certain quality to an individual coming from a certain confirmation bias, or a person may act altruistically if they find it to be the norm to. You can mix scenarios all day and find how each subject relates to one another. As cultures and societies change and evolve, so do the ethics, morals, and values of the people within them. Thank you for watching my presentation. Have a good rest of your day.